OpenAI has just released Canvas, which is a new interface for working with ChatGPT on writing and code projects that go beyond simple chat. Canvas opens in a new separate window, allowing you and ChatGPT to collaborate on a project. So it actually provides a new way of working together, not just through conversation, but by creating and refining ideas side by side. So in this video, I am going to show you how you can perform data analysis using ChatGPT with Canvas. All right, so let's get started. So in order to use the ChatGPT Canvas, you firstly need to have the GPT-4 subscription. And once you have that, you have to log into the ChatGPT and then from the available models option, you have to select GPT-4 or with Canvas. So firstly, I'm going to show you how you can use the ChatGPT with Canvas for stock market analysis. And in this example, I'm going to show you that how can you use it without any data set. So firstly, I'm going to provide it the prompt that says generate a code environment to use Python in order to do stock market analysis with Yahoo Finance library. And once you run it, you will see that it will open a new window for you in which it will provide you all the code that is needed in order to perform the stock market analysis. And on the left hand side, it is going to provide you a brief description of what is actually happening inside the code and how you can do that. All right, so you can see that here is the entire code in order to perform basic stock market analysis using the Yahoo Finance library. And if you see here on the left hand side, it is providing you three different libraries which will be needed in order to get this code running. So now I'm going to create a new Google Collab notebook and inside it, firstly, I'm going to install the three libraries, which are the Y Finance, Matplotlib and Pandas. Once these libraries are successfully downloaded, now I'm going to head back to my chat GPT. I'm going to copy the code, paste it right here inside my notebook and then run it. Once you do that, it is going to provide you a chart showing the AAPL stock price over time. On the X axis, we have different dates and on the Y axis, we have the closing price for the US dollars. And that's not all. If we scroll down a little bit, we also have the AAPL stock price with 50 days moving average. In this chart, the blue lines represent the AAPL closing prices and the yellow dotted lines represent the 50 days moving average. So these were a very basic example of performing stock market analysis on the Yahoo Finance library. If you want to perform further analysis, you can do that too. And the best part is you don't need to create an entirely new conversation and provide the same prompts again and again. You can simply collaborate with ChatGPT right here and ask it to cha make changes inside this particular code as well. So now within the same conversation, I'm going to ask it to now add more advanced code to do advanced data visualizations of the stock. And instead of providing me new code, it is going to make changes to the already provided code and will add the new requirements in that code too. And once you have the updated code, simply copy it, go back and I'm going to change the above code to incorporate all the changes which have been made by chat gpt and now once again it has started providing me different type of graphs firstly we have the graph for the aapn stock price over time then we have the aapn stock price with 50 days moving average and if we scroll down a little bit now we also have a, an aapn candlestick chart and you can simply hover upon each candle to get different type of information about what that candle is representing and in addition to it, if you scroll down further, you also have a chart for AAPL trading volume over time. On the X axis, we have different dates and on the Y axis, we have the trading volume over time. Moreover, it has also provided us a correlation heat map of the stock features where it has provided us different values like volume, edges and close, close, low, high and open on the X and the Y axis and has provided us a correlation heat map showing different variations by the two different colors. So you can see that instead of creating entirely new conversation, I simply asked it to add more visualizations in the same provided code. And instead of providing me entirely new code, it changed the already existing code and added this requirement in that code, which provided us all of these new visualizations. So this is one way of performing stock market analysis, but without having a data set. But if you want to have data set and then you want to perform analysis on it, you can do that too using the chat GPT with Canvas. So this is the data set that we are going to use. It is actually a data set of mobile money transactions for fraud detection. So I'm going to copy the column names for all the columns of the data set. And then inside my chat GPT with Canvas, I'm going to provide it the prompt 
that use the columns in this data set to create fraud occurrence forecast provide as much visualizations as you can and then i've provided it the list of all the columns which are present in the data set along with the first row of the data set and once you run it once again it is going to open a new window for us providing us the code so i'm going to copy all of this code from here and then inside my collab notebook i'm going to paste all the code right here and i have already added the data set inside my google collab this is the file called data.csv which contains the financial data set for the fraud detection and i've pasted its path right here inside the pd.readcsv function now let's go ahead and run this all right so it has started generating different types of visualization firstly it is providing us the transaction type distribution in which on the x-axis we have the different transaction types and on the y-axis we have the count of each type of transaction then we have a bar chart for fraud by transaction type on the x-axis we have the different transaction types on the y-axis we have the count of each transactions the blue bars represent the number of transactions which are non-fraudulent and the transactions represented by orange or yellow bar shows the number of transactions of each category which may be fraudulent you can see that in case of transfer and cash out transactions there were some fraudulent transactions then if we scroll down we have a line chart showing the transaction amount distribution for fraud versus non-fraud blue represents non-fraud orange represents fraud and you can see that a large portion of our transactions are non-fraudulent and only a small portion were the fraudulent and now within the same conversation i'm going to provide it another prompt that also provides the python code to create a kind of complete report predicting which of the transactions in the data set may be fraudulent and it has opened a new window for providing us the code and on the left hand side it will provide us a description of what is actually happening inside the code so now i'm simply going to copy this code from here head back to my notebook and then i'm simply going to paste all of that code right here let's see if we need to provide our data set here we have to remove all of this value from right here and instead of it i'm going to write df equals to pd dot read csv and then provide the path where the file is present let's run it okay so it has thrown us an error and let's quickly copy this head back here and then paste it here and it is going to provide us the response you can see that it is checking the code line by line to see where the error may be present and then based on its investigation it is saying that i've added a line to handle the missing values by filling them with zeros this should resolve the value error so let's copy the new code head back right here and i'm going to replace the previous code with the new code let's run it and you will see that it will start providing us different types of values which are in the kind of report to predict or identify the fraudulent transactions from the data set so you can see that firstly it has provided us a table on the basis of which it is marking each transaction as fraud or not fraud then it is providing us information about the different columns moreover it has also provided us that there these are the total number of transactions out of which the total number of potentially fraudulent transactions is this value and all the fraudulent transaction record has been saved to a file called fraudulent transaction.csv and if i go to the files right here you can see that right now we have a new csv file that contains all the potentially fraudulent transactions present in our data set and then finally inside the same conversation i'm going to ask it to perform exploratory data analysis on the provided columns and once again without providing us an entirely new code it is going to make changes inside the already existing code which we can use in our notebook or any platform that we want so let's simply copy this code from here head back to your notebook and i'm going to paste the code right here let's run it so here is the output firstly it is providing us different kinds of information about a data set it is providing us data set description in which it is calculating the count mean median standard deviation maximum minimum and maximum value 25 percent 50 percent 75 percent for all the values of the data set then it has provided us different types of visualization but it firstly it is providing us transaction type visualization which we have also previously seen then it has provided us a bar chart showing the fraudulent versus non-fraudulent transactions so you can see that most of the transactions inside our data set are non-fraudulent and only a few are fraudulent and then we also have a chart showing the transaction amount distribution for the fraudulent 
versus non fraudulent transactions so only a few transaction densities are fraudulent which is represented by this orange line all other are non fraudulent so in this way you can use the canvas with chat gpt to perform data analysis on any kind of data set that you want and you can also perform data analysis without any data set like i showed you in the first example and the best part about the canvas is that you don't need to start an entirely new conversation every time you can simply ask it to make changes to your existing code and without providing you a new code chunk it is going to make changes in the previously provided code which you can use according to your requirements that's all for this video thanks for watching